Hello everyone and welcome to the lesson part of the language comparison series. In this video we will learn all of the two lessons together as one big lesson. So are you ready? Now can you see the similarities between the family trees? For an example, good in the Latin or Romance languages generally have a bien, bene, bien, bien feeling to their word for good in English. And in the Germanic family tree, the word is very similar to gut. We can also see that in German, Tag feels like day in English. If these words guten Tag are put together, we get a feeling of good day or hello. Guten Tag. Can you see in the following example the same point in the Romance languages? Here we have the words for good in their languages. Bon. Buon. Buenos. Bon. They mean good. And the word meaning day. Jour. Giorno. Dias. Gia. Putting these together would generally make good day or hello. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Buenos dias. Bon dia. We can see many patterns and similarities in languages because they all share history and influence from different languages over time. Can you see the following similarities in the Scandinavian languages that mean Can you help me? Can du hjälpa mig? Can du hjälp mig? Can du hjälp mig? Can you see the word can in all of these three languages? It seems like the English can. 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 And the words? Hjälp. Hjälp. Hjälp seem to resemble the English help. I suppose then, if we see the word may, 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 in the problem we solved with can and help, it could mean me. Therefore, the phrase in Swedish kan du hjälpa mig? could mean can you help me? And note that du, du, du sounds a little like you in English or tu meaning you in the Romance languages. This is just an example of using your initiative when working out a language. And though it's not always right, it can massively help you if you're willing to break the meaning of a foreign language phrase. So now, let's evaluate some foreign phrases together from the family trees and learn some of the etymology, the origins of the words and try to make some rules to remembering phrases in these different languages according to their family trees and a feeling of the words. Now, here is part two of the lesson that contains the phrases we studied in lesson two. Firstly, let's look at the Romance family. Can you notice that for please in the Romance languages, the words are asking for a favor, which means please, for example, in Spanish, Por favor. And Portuguese. Por favor. And. Per favore. In Italian, translates literally as for a favor. And in French, s'il vous plaît, means if you please. A great way to remember thank you in the Romance languages is simple. I remember them as a person has done something for me. And I said thank you. I am grateful to you. The word grateful is the key word in English. So you can now remember the Italian Grazie The Spanish Gracias Quite easily Although in French I remember Merci Like I have asked somebody for mercy and they have granted it to me and therefore I am thankful to them So Merci Thanks I remember in Portuguese Obrigado As I have always asked someone to do something for me and they are obliged to do it meaning they must do it and therefore I am thankful in return. Obrigado. Obliged. Thank you. Obrigado. Do you remember the word for good in the Romance languages? They were Bien. Bene. Bien. Bien. So, to say that I am well or I am good, we unfortunately have to learn the verb I am or I stay or I go in those languages and add the word for good. Note, in some languages you don't have to use the pronoun I and in some cases a verb, such as in Italian sto, meaning to be. You can just say bene, meaning good. 
or I'm good instead of sto bene. Je vais bien. Io sto bene. Io sto bien. Io sto bene. Easy. To remember I don't understand in the Romance languages, we just need to think from Latin. In English we use the word comprehend to understand something. So if you can remember that verb from Latin, you can remember the French, Italian, Spanish and Portuguese. In this example we have used I don't understand so that you can see how easy it is to make something negative just by adding N non no no in french we have je ne comprends pas in italian non capisco in spanish non comprendo and this also goes for portuguese não entendo to remember this remember it like this that you don't intend to know what someone is saying and you don't understand. It's easy, right? To say you love someone, I love you, in the Romance languages, we have to think about the Latin verb amare. The love verb in French, Italian, Spanish and Portuguese would be Amy. Amare. Amar. Amar. Then we just conjugate the verbs using personal pronouns, such as I, you, he or she, it, we, you and they. So can you now see that most of the words for you in the Romance languages use tu, ti, te, chi for the word you and the verb aimer, amare, amar, amar to make the phrase I love you. Je t'aime. Ti amo. Te amo. Eu te amo. We can see the to love verb modified to mean I love. And the person tu, ti, te, chi, meaning you. Now let's take a look at the Germanic languages. To ask how a person is doing in the Germanic languages, we have the following. Can you see in Dutch and Afrikaans that there are great similarities? Hoe gaat het met je? Hoe gaat het met je? Hoe? And who? seems like how in both languages and ye yo means you in this case gaat in dutch gaan in afrikaans means is going so this phrase basically means how is it going how are you doing or how are you in german it's a little different with we meaning how and geht meaning it goes. So, how it goes, or how's it going, or how are you? We get. I don't speak. Note, we have put the negative in brackets so that you can see how to say I speak, and also I don't speak. In this phrase, can you notice the personal pronoun I? It's easy. It's ich in German, ich in Dutch, and ach. In Afrikaans, the verb is after to speak. Spreche in German and spreek in Dutch. Even though in the Afrikaans language it's praat. Can you see how it sounds negative around the verb using ni? So it reads, I speak not. Then the name of a language would come next. This rule is the same in German and Dutch too. I speak not. The same rules apply in the phrase I don't understand, where the translation would sound in English like I understand not. This time the German and Afrikaans seem similar instead, with the verbs verstehen and verstehen, meaning to understand. To remember this is the fun of studying and learning and trying to break their codes. That's the fun of learning languages. Now let's take a look at how to tell someone that you love them. Do you remember the pronoun for I in German? It's Ich Ich The verb Liebe Liebe Love and Dich You I love you Ich liebe dich Easy! In Dutch we remember I as Ich and the verb Houden van to love and jou meaning you 
When we have finished modifying the verb so that it sounds grammatically correct. So I love you is Ik hou van jou. Ik hou van jou. In Afrikaans, it's a little longer. Ek is lief vir jou. Or Ek het jou lief. This can be literally translated as I am loving for you. It's a little crazier, but don't forget that every language and culture is unique. That's what makes a language different from every other language. Okay, now let's take a look at the Nordic languages and see what we can see. Here's how to say good day or hello in Swedish, Norwegian and Danish. Does it look familiar? It looks similar to what we learned in the Germanic languages, right? The ways to say hello in this way seem like the Germanic languages because in the Germanic the word for good was Guten Goed Goeie Good Cool Cool And the word for day is Tag Dag Dag Dog Tag Day Good day Guten Tag Guten Dag Goeie Dag Good dog. Good dog. Good day. Note. Remember that this is how to say good day or good afternoon. But there are other ways to say hello in these languages. It depends on the time of day and whom you are speaking with. For example, Hey. In Swedish. Do you know why they look familiar to the Germanic languages? Because the Nordic languages are North Germanic languages. That means they were developed in history from the Germanic languages over time. Knowing that they share a history can help you in the future when learning new words, phrases or terms. In the Nordic languages, to ask how something is or somebody is, it's very similar. Let's take a look in the languages. Swedish Hur har du det? Norwegian Hur går det med dig? Danish Hvordan går det? Can you see the resemblance? Hearing them is also very similar. Let's take a look at the way to say I love you in the Nordic languages. I love you in Swedish Jag älskar dig Norwegian Jag älskar dig Danish Jag älskar dig We can see that the phrases are very similar and have only some differences in pronunciation and spelling. The G is much more stronger in Swedish. I is Jag 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 And the verb to love goes in the middle. Älskar And Älskar And Älskar And the word for you goes at the end. Dig 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 Firstly, let's start off with the Romance family. There are many ways to get somebody's attention in the Romance languages. However, they are all easy to remember as they seem quite similar to English. For example, the French version of Excuse me, it seems very similar to English with Excusez-moi Excuse me In Italian Scusi is very easy to remember. You can also say Mi scusi to sound even more closer to English. In Spanish Disculpe is the verb meaning to excuse and perdonar is the verb meaning to pardon or forgive. However, using Disculpe is the better version for asking for somebody's attention. In Portuguese, we say Com licença which I remember as the English word for license like I am asking for permission to get somebody's attention with a license or permission. So Com licença Permission to speak with you or excuse me the easiest one of the Romance languages to remember is probably Romanian. To ask for someone's attention by simply saying Pardon Like Pardon in English Excuse me Pardon How much is it? Can you see in the Romance languages the most common word in all of the languages? It would be Cut Costa Questa Costa Costa These words all come from the Latin verb Constare, which simply means to cost. Then we have the adverb meaning how much, which are Combien? Quanto? 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 Good. So to ask how much does it cost in the Romance languages would be French. 
Combien ça coûte? Italian. Quanto costa? Spanish. Quanto costa? Portuguese. Quanto costa? Romanian. Quanto costa? To ask where is a place in the Romance languages, we need to learn the adverb for where and the word for is, which would be où. in French. Dove? In Italian. Donde? In Spanish. Onde? In Portuguese. And onde? In Romanian. Then the word for is or it is and now putting all of it together, we can see and hear the similarities. Where is? Où est? Dove? Donde está? Onde é? Onde este? It's just a matter of remembering the similar words. To remember you're welcome in the Romance languages, we just have to remember that it is a pleasure helping someone or it was nothing, with pleasure or nothing being the general idea. Can you see the word for pleasure in French and Romanian? They are Avec plaisir ou placere. Then for Spanish and Portuguese, we literally have of nothing or simply it's nothing. Spanish. De nada. Portuguese. De nada. Learning and remembering no problem in all of the 11 languages is easy. They all share the common word for problem and a word that has a negative feeling which means no. Can you see and hear the similarities for the word problem in the Romance languages? They are Problem. Problema. 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 Then we have the word for no, or you have no, or without. Can you see? Sem problemas. In Portuguese, seems like censored problems, like they are blocked out or censored, or no problems. Nice to meet you. Can you see how easy it is in French to remember nice to meet you? It's enchanté, which seems like the English enchanted. Just remember it is like you're feeling happy or enchanted to meet that person. So, enchanté, nice to meet you. In Italian, we have piacere, which literally translates as pleasure. Or it's a pleasure to meet you. Easy. Unfortunately, we have to learn and remember the rest. But can you notice that in Romanian, there is a word said as Unosc. Which in Italian would seem like conoscere, meaning to know somebody. Can you see how learning one language can help you understand learning other languages in its family tree? So, using this same kind of method, without me knowing any Spanish or Portuguese, I can see that in Spanish Mucho. And Muito. In Portuguese, seem similar. We remember in the previous lesson that these words meant very or a lot. So in this case with Brazi. In Portuguese, resembling the Italian Iacere. Maybe it means it's very much a pleasure or very pleased to meet you. Oi, prazer. Repeat it please. The key word to remember in this phrase is the verb repeat, which comes from Latin. Don't forget that the Romance family is the closest language family to Latin. So therefore, the verbs are so important when breaking codes, patterns and problems in any Romance language. So, can you see the verb in these phrases meaning to repeat? It's here. Then, can you see the word for please? They are here. So now we get an idea that the phrase means please, repeat. Veuillez répéter s'il vous plaît. Ripeti, per favore. Podria repetir, por favor? Por favor. Pode repetir. Repetate, vă rog. Do you remember how important verbs are in a language? The verb to speak in the Romance families are here. We have parler in French, parlare in Italian, hablar in Spanish, falar in Portuguese, and a vorbi in Romanian. Don't forget that we have to conjugate the verb to speak so that it means I talk or I speak when we use the verb to be able to or can and then the verb to speak to understand the phrase. I can speak a little bit of and then the language would be next. Can you notice the verb to say from Latin in all of these phrases? It's here. Then can you see the question word for how in all of the languages? They go here at the start. They are Como. Come. Como. Como. Cum. Then the word for you or literally one would be Vous. Si, se, se, se. And then the language would come at the end. This would literally mean, how does one say, or in, 
and then the language. Next, we add a phrase or a word in the middle in English to ask someone how to say a word or phrase in that language. Do you know that in English we say the word mean, which comes from West Germanic? But we also have a Latin version of the verb in English, which we know as signifies. If we use our knowledge of Latin verb signifies, we can identify the meaning of these phrases, which mean what does mean. The question word what goes at the start. We then add a word or phrase in the language that we are speaking in at the end of the phrases. Let's hear how to pronounce what does mean in the Romance languages. In English, what does mean? French. Que signifie? Italian. Cosa significa? Spanish. Que significa? Portuguese. O que significa? Romanian. Que enseamne? Now let's take a look at the Germanic family. Do you know that many people think that Dutch is one of the closest languages to English? I suppose a good example would be the word excuse me with excusier. Whilst in German it would be entschuldigen Sie. Do you remember that the Latin verb to cost was constare? Well, did you know that in the free language families that we are studying all use the verb from Latin? In German and Dutch the verbs are kosten, kos, ten. And kosten, kosten in Dutch. Now, can you remember in lesson one we learned how to say "How are you?" in German? It was wie geht's. So, if you remember how to say "How are you?" in German, you probably remember the word for "how" in German was wie. Now that you know wie is how and kostet is cost, can you slowly identify that s? Might be similar to is in the Romance languages, and this phrase is most likely to mean how much does it cost? Wie viel kostet es? In Dutch, het, which we also saw in lesson one, means is kost. Logically means cost. So who fail? We can guess means how much. So how much does it cost? Would be who fail cost it? Can you see how similar German and Dutch are to English in this simple phrase that means "Where is? Wo ist? Waar is?" Now we have learned another question word for our Germanic vocabulary memory bank. In German, "Wo" and "Waar." In Dutch, no problem, kein Problem, kein Problem. Again, can you see how two phrases here seem so similar to English? Now we have also learned a rough idea of how to make a phrase sound a little negative with "kein" in German and "geen" in Dutch. So take notes. Do you remember "I" in the Germanic languages, which we studied in lesson one? They were "ich" in German and "ik" in Dutch. In German, "ich bin aus" means "I am from," and in Dutch, "ik kom uit." It feels more similar to English with "I come from." Now that we know how Dutch is, and this German phrase means "I am from," we can remember "Ich bin," meaning "I am," and make other short phrases such as "I am sad." Ich bin traurig. I am a teacher. Ich bin Lehrer. I am English. Ich bin. Engländer. In Dutch, I am is ik ben. I am sad is ik ben verdrietig. I am happy ik ben blij. And I am a teacher. Ik ben leraar. Do you remember the Germanic words for please from lesson one? They were bitte in German, alstublieft in Dutch. Then if you know the verb to repeat in German as Wiederholen. And Dutch, herhalen. Can you see in Dutch how easy it is to recognize "kunt u dit" as "can you it" and the verb to repeat? So, can you repeat it and then the please "alstublieft"? So, can you repeat it, please? Would be "kunt u dit herhalen alstublieft"? Then in German we have "repeat", "wiederholen", "sie", meaning "you" and "bitte", "please". So can you repeat it, please? Wiederholen Sie bitte. 
Do you remember I speak in German and Dutch that we studied in lesson one? They were Ich spreche in German and Ich spreche in Dutch. Then we need to say a little and then a language. So a little or just a little bit would be Ein bisschen in German and Ein klein beetje in Dutch. Then the name of the languages would come at the end. So to say I can speak a little bit of German would be Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. And I can speak a little bit of Dutch. Ik spreek een klein beetje Nederlands. Now we have learned the phrases for a little, so try to remember them. Tip. It's a lot easier to remember phrases in foreign languages if you remember a sentence, not just a word. So if you can remember I speak just a little bit of Dutch in Dutch, then later you learn to make new phrases. For example, you learned I am sad in Dutch as Ik ben Verdrietig. So, how would we say, I am a little bit sad? It would be, Ik ben een klein beetje verdrietig. Great job! Using your knowledge from lesson one, does the words hoe, je, in, het look familiar? Hoe zeg je in het Nederlands? Hoe as how and je means you and in, het means in the. So, how, something, you, in the Netherlands. So we should figure out what zeg means say in Dutch. Therefore, hoe zeg je in het Nederlands? How do you say in Dutch? It goes the same for in German, where we learned as wie, how, and sagt, say, man, means you. In Deutsch. In German, how do you say in German? Wie sagt man in Deutsch? Here's how to say what does mean in German and Dutch. Was bedeutet what betekent The word to mean is bedeuten in German and in Dutch it is betekenen. Can you notice the words for what in German and Dutch? In German was and in Dutch what if you have studied carefully in lesson 1 and 2, you should be able to recognize in German and Dutch some question words from the phrases that we have studied. Here they are. How? Wie? Who? What? Was? What? Where? Wo? Waar? Here are some more. Who? Wer? Wie? When? Wann? Wanneer? Why? Warum? Warum? Learning question words in any language can greatly help you understand the context of the phrase a lot more, so try to remember them. Now let's move on to the Scandinavian languages. Can you hear the close similarities in means of pronunciation between the three languages in the phrase that means Excuse me. Ursäkta mig. Unskyld mig. Unskyld. Another noticeable thing is to realise the word for me that we learned in lesson one. They seem similar to English. Let's listen to how each language pronounces the word me. Me. My. My. Can you notice the verb for cost in the Scandinavian languages? This will help you remember and identify the phrases from using English. They are Costa. 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 Also notice that the word Det. De. De means it is or is it. Also, we can see the word for how much and how similar they are in three languages. How much is pronounced as the following. In Swedish, Hur mycket? In Norwegian, Hur mye? In Danish, Vad mal? How much is it? In Swedish, Vad kostar det? In Norwegian, Hur mye er det? In Danish, Vad kostar det? Can you try to guess the word for where in the North Germanic languages? They are Var 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 Then a word for is or is located is as followed. Var ligger Var är Var är Again, can you see visibly our words seem very similar to each other in their family language? Let's take a listen. Varsågod Varsågod Välbekomme can you notice that Willkommen looks a little similar to the German word for welcome. Willkommen. Willkommen. 
Again, like most of the languages we have studied, here is the word for problem. 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 Then a word to make the sentence negative. These phrases mean no problem. In Swedish, inga problem. Norwegian, ikke noe problem. In Danish, ikke noe problem. Do you remember the words we learned in lesson one, which mean I or I am? They are jag, jeg, jeg. Then we have the verb to come and the connecting, which is from. Från. Fra. Fra. Let's listen to all the words to see and hear the similarities and see how easy they are to identify by grouping them together as a family of languages. Jag kommer från. Jag är från. Jag är från. Here's how to say, repeat it please. Let's take a look at the verb to repeat in the languages. Upprepa. Ojenta. Gente. However, now, did you notice that in Danish, the phrase goes straight to the point in asking someone to repeat it? Let's take a look at the words that highlight a sense of politeness that mean please. Är du snäll? Är du snäll? And again, a word we have seen frequently. Det. 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 Can you remember what it means? It means it. Easy. Upprepa är du snäll. Gjenta det är du snäll. Kan du gjenta det? In this phrase, do you remember the word for I? Now let's listen to all three languages pronounce can. And don't forget that in lesson one we learned that can. 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 Seems like the English word for can. Then the verb to speak or to talk comes after. Let's listen. Pratar. Snacke. Tail. And then these words mean a little. In Swedish. Lite. In Norwegian. Lit. In Danish. Lit. See how easy they seem to remember if you practice. In Swedish. Jag kan prata lite svenska. Norwegian. Jag kan snacka lite norsk. In Danish. Jag kan tale lite dansk. How do you say in a North Germanic language? In Swedish. Hur säger man på svenska? In Norwegian. Hur säger du på norsk? And finally in Danish. Again, here is the question word for how. In Swedish it is Hur. In Norwegian Varen. And in Danish it is Vordan. Then to say is the verb. However, we have to conjugate the verb to mean you say or one says. And then at the end, let's listen how to pronounce the name of the language in their languages. In Swedish Svenska. In Norwegian. Norsk. And finally in Danish. Dansk. Hur säger man på svenska? Hur säger du på norsk? Vad danser man på dansk? Here we have learned another question word. That in this context means what does mean. They are. Vad? Va. Well. We have the word for what, and a word which means to mean. In Swedish. Vad betyder? Norwegian. Vad betyder? In Danish. Vad betyder? Now let's review all the question words that we have learned from the North Germanic or Scandinavian languages, and also a few more. Who, what, why, when. Where and how? Who? Vem? 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 What? Vad? Va? Väl? Why? Varför? 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 When? När? Mor? Var nå? Where? Var? 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 And how? Hur? Vordan? Vad den? 
We will now leave you with some bonus tongue twisters. In English, she sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells, I'm sure. In French, un chasseur sachant chasser doit savoir chasser sans son chien. In Italian, trentatré trentini entrarono a Trento, tutti e trentatré trotterellando. In Spanish, ¿Cómo quieres que te quiera? Si el que quiero que me quiera, no me quiere como quiero que me quiera. In Portuguese, o rato roeu a roupa do rei de Roma. In German, Fischers Fritze fischt frische Fische. Frische Fische fischt Fischers Fritze. In Dutch, Liesje leerde lochje lopen langs de lange lindelaan. In Swedish, Sju, sjö sjuka sjömän. In Norwegian. Fire fine vite fisker på ett fint vitt fiskefat. In Danish. Bud, rød, rød øl, rødne, rød, øl, med fløde. Thanks for watching our series and learning with us. We hope to see you again. Please leave a like on this video so we know that you enjoyed it and we can continue to make more. Subscribe to our channel to support us and help us keep up the hard work that we do. Remember to comment on all our videos with your thoughts, questions and comments so that we can help you or reply to you. And don't forget to ring the notification bell to keep up to date when we make our new videos. See you soon.